Hey everyone, the name is Director, and I want to show you in this video that you are more clouded by bias than you might think. And if you want to become an accurate personality profiler, if you want to read a person's mind, predict their values, and find out their core preferences, who they are at their best in a state of flow, you have to learn to see past this bias and this, these stereotypes. If you can't, you're constantly going to be mistyping other people, and you will fail to understand other people correctly. And here, I'm gonna read to you a series of statements that are meant to show you just how bias clouds our minds. And I'm gonna show you one core thing, and that is we keep confusing a person's behavior towards us or others with their type or their preference. And we look at the wrong things, and so we need to shift and reframe and look at the right things. So we need to start asking the right questions to get the right answers. Now I'm going to show you by starting with statement number one. She always liked to work with other people. Now given this statement, what is more likely? Is it more likely that she is A. Extroverted B. A feeling type C. An agreeable type or D. An outgoing type? And here, what I want to show you is simple. She is not an extrovert. I'm going to rule that out immediately. Why is she not an extrovert? Because we don't know if she gets and enjoys listening to other people and hearing their perspectives and viewpoints. We don't know if she likes to ask questions and to study her environment and to study what's happening around her. We don't know if she actually has a preference for that or not. We only li know she likes working with other people, which must mean one thing. She's had positive experiences of hanging out with other people. She must have been good at solving conflict and managing teamwork. She must seem to be able to and have learned how to manage conflict and to avoid drama and to create a solution-oriented environment where people work together and collaborate and have a good time. And that leads us to the right answer. She is an agreeable type. She could be an outgoing type. We don't know. She could be. But we don't, she doesn't have to be because we don't know if she likes to live a busy or active or eventful life. We don't know if she likes meeting new people at all. But we keep reading these things in. We keep hearing these statements and we keep reading all these things in. She likes hanging out with people, so she must always like to meet new people. She likes being with people, she must, so she must always like listening to and studying other people. And that's is why we keep confusing personality type with behavior and that is why we keep misreading each other's and misunderstanding each other's. So now let's move on to statement number two. My, ma my mom would always dismiss everything I said as too abstract, too vague or too broad. Option A. Are we dealing with A. A sensor B. A thinking type C, a disagreeable type, or D, a narrow-minded type. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. I think we can all have, remember as intuitives like negative experiences with sensors when we felt dismissed or as if they didn't listen to us or didn't understand us. But can we really know for sure that this is a sensor? What if this is an intuitive type? What if this is an intuitive and narrow-minded type? And what I mean with this narrow-mindedness is simple. A person that doesn't listen to you or doesn't hear you out or doesn't seem open to what you say is a person that has a strong sense of what they know. They know for sure what uh, is right. They think they know what's best. And it's easy for a parent to think they know what's best, you know, like because they've been in a position for care and nurture for you and they have that experience and that age difference. And in all of this, I think a lot of people misread their parents as sensors. And it's all to do with uh, this age gap where, you know, you're open minded towards your own generation's ideas and thoughts and beliefs and opinions and uh, to your own level of development. But you can't really always hear other people. And in all of this, I want you to think about the nature of narrow mindedness and why this person is narrow minded. And not a sensor. There might be plenty of intuitive types out there that are dismissive towards your ideas because they have strong ideas of their own, strong values of their own, and 
they might be too sure, too arrogant, too full of hubris to hear you out. And it's important to correctly address that. Otherwise, you might end up mistyping someone. Statement number three. We were always trying to get him to open up, but he was always so closed. He would never be able to share anything. He would never tell us what was really going on. Now the options are, we are dealing with an introverted type. B, we are dealing with a reserved type. C, we are dealing with an extroverted type. D, we are dealing with a thinking type. Now, the answer here is B, a reserved type. And the reason for this is, a reserved type can be either introverted or extroverted, can be either a thinker or a feeler. They can all have one thing in common, negative experiences of opening up to others. When they opened up to others, they felt rejected and judged, so they preferred to keep things to themselves. They thought it wasn't a point to say anything because other people wouldn't understand. In all of this, anyone who has experienced this can become reserved. And anyone that has had these experiences can be an introvert, can be an extrovert, can be a feeler, or can be a thinker. Statement number four, and I'm going to end with this one. She never spoke out for herself. She always let other people lead. When people asked her what was going on and what she wanted, she would always ask them what they wanted back in return. Option A, are we dealing with a perceiving type? And option B, are we dealing with an introverted type? Option C, are we dealing with a feeling type? Or option D, are we dealing with a, a person with low conscientiousness? And I'm just going to say it. This is a person with low conscientiousness. And we often assume that a person that is uh, free flow and hippie like is a perceiving type. But in reality, while perceivers can be hippie-like, they don't have to be hippie-like. If they have been fostered in an environment that taught them to develop their perceiving function, they would come to have a lot of opinions and a lot of thoughts and strong values and opinions of their own, and they would have a strong ability to speak out for themselves. And we're not dealing necessarily with an introvert either. While introverts can be at times quiet because they are stuck in their own heads and they have thought takes, taken some time before they shared with others, uh, they will still often, when healthy, show a lot of influence and strong p options and opinions of their own. And with that, I want to round up this video with one thing. I want you to take my challenge. I want you to take my personality profile request. <laughs> And I want you to see for yourself if you can tell the difference between personality type and the big five type. Can you tell the difference between an agreeable type and a feeling type? Can you tell the difference between an introverted type and a reserved person? Can you tell the difference between an extrovert and an outgoing person? Or can you tell the difference between a perceiving type and a lazy person? With that in mind, what I want you to remember is we are all clouded by bias and we all have these issues and this issue is bigger than we think. It's so big in MTI. Almost every personality test gets it wrong. Almost every personality type confuses and misleads and misguides because we haven't really figured out yet that personality type isn't behavior. And I want you to chew on this. If you believe personality type is behavior, if you believe that how outgoing a person is has anything to do with their personality type, how can behavior that is developable, such as how you can become more outgoing, you can become more served over time, um, related to personality type, which is said to be fixed? How can something that is said to be fixed, such as personality type, be something that you can develop how can you become more extroverted if your personality type is fixed? No. What I believe is simple. Personality type is a reflection of a preference for the outer world or the inner world or for intuition or for sensing. 
It is not a hardwired, I will always act this way, I will always be like this, I will always think like that, I will always do this. No, there is a difference. And the difference is the reflection of your development, your state of development and how actualized you are in how connected you are to yourself in how good you are at following and respecting your own person and your own needs and standing up for yourself and what you believe in developing your own opinions and in being true to yourself. This is how to become a personality profiler and this is also how to grow past limiting beliefs about yourself, how to as an introvert recognize that you don't have to keep being reserved and that you can find a way to be more outgoing even as an introvert. Thank you all for watching this video. Let's free people from limiting beliefs and let's grow together. Let's become personality profilers, skilled in accurately reading and predicting and understanding each other as we are, not as we see them with our own bias and stereotypes.